Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good morning, Mr. David K. Johnston. How are you? Terrific. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And you are going to be my Donald Trump stand-in today. How about that? All right. <laughs> We're going to talk about your book. You're the author of The Making of Donald Trump, the culmination of nearly 30 years of reporting on Donald Trump. You know, this is a revealing and a close look at the mogul's rise to power and prominence. All right, you've got the stage. What do we need to know about Donald Trump ahead of tonight's debate? Well, the most important thing is that Donald is a terrific salesman, um, and I've known him for 28 years. Uh, he's very good at selling, and what he's selling you is not who he is and what the public record shows. The public record shows that he has spent his entire life doing business with violent felons, American mobsters, Russian mobsters, con artists. He went out of his way to seek mercy for a major cocaine trafficker who also happened to be the person who supplied him with his helicopters and managed his personal helicopter. And he cut off health care for a sickly infant, putting that child's life in jeopardy. By the way, his grandnephew, whose life was in jeopardy, over money. Uh, the person you're seeing that uh, he's selling you has nothing to do with what the extensive public record shows. And, and by the way, there are 44 pages of notes, Valder, in the back of my book so people can look up and check the facts, the court records, the letters, the um, uh, chapters in his books, etc. You have an intimate look at him. You've said this. I've heard you say this on other shows. Are people listening? Um, I don't know. I mean, my job as an investigative reporter and everything I've done for 50 years is to tell you things you wouldn't know but for my work. And some of my stories have led to big changes. An innocent man getting out of prison after I uh, hunted down the real killer, uh, getting two presidents to change their tax policies, and sometimes I've written stories where nothing's happened. Uh, but my duty is to tell you what you don't know that, in my professional judgment, it's important to know. Why did you decide to write this book? Because it's so synchronistic of the times. Well, when Donald Trump announced this time that he was running for president in June of 2015, it was dismissed by most journalists as a vanity project because of what he'd done in 2012 when he said, oh, I'd, I'd like to be president, but my, my TV show needs me. I understood that he was serious this time, and I began writing pieces aimed at journalists saying, here are the questions you should be asking Donald Trump about his background, his behavior, and his conduct, and pointing to the public record. Well, nobody did it. Uh, my initial 21 questions for him, only two were ever asked, one by Marco Rubio and another by Ted Cruz, but not by journalists. And so as it became clear he was going to get the nomination, I wanted to write a book. None of the traditional big publishers could do it in a hurry, and this publisher, Melville House, which specializes in doing books at high speed, uh, came along and approached me and my agent, and I said, good, let's do this. And so I produced The Making of Donald Trump. I don't know if this is a fair question to you, but after reporting on him for almost 30 years, can I ask you, do you feel he is fit to be president of these United yeah. States of America? No, he is not fit to be president under any circumstances. And, and I'm a registered Republican of many years. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't know what the powers, duties, and responsibilities of the president are. He talks like the president is a dictator. He doesn't understand anything about nuclear weapons. I mean, he's publicly mused, why don't we use nuclear weapons? It shows he doesn't know what he's talking about there. He is advancing the major foreign policy objective of the murderous autocrat Vladimir Putin, and he's collected 
many millions of dollars from the wealthy oligarchs around Putin. And if you're not in with Putin, you know, he's had some of these people murdered and others imprisoned. Uh, he participated in a number of tax frauds, which I make very clear in the book, a sales tax fraud. He's currently involved in litigation alleging that he authorized, and maybe he'll become a defendant, in a quarter billion dollar tax fraud. But most importantly, he simply doesn't know anything. And I cite his testimony under oath to things that my students, now that I teach, who are third year law students and graduate business students at Syracuse University could answer at the snap of a finger. He gives answers that are gibberish because he just doesn't know anything. It's all sales. He wants to get you to do something. He says, I'm this great businessman, and yet he has a long history of failed businesses and of destroying or seriously damaging little businesses that were vendors where he took the goods and services and then refused to pay for them. David K. Johnson is the author of The Making of Donald Trump. You know, I've got two questions i got to ask you. One, let's do taxes first. Why do you think he hasn't released his taxes, and why do you think people don't care? Well, taxes is my area of expertise. Uh, Trump probably has not paid income taxes since 1977. That's the last year we know that he paid. And there's very good evidence, sworn testimony that I cite in my book, that he committed tax fraud in 1984. And we know that in recent years he's reported an income of less than $500,000 because of public record materials I cite in the book. He doesn't want people to know that his wealth and income are nothing near what he tells people, and he certainly doesn't want them to know that uh, there are strong indications called badges of fraud that he's engaged in tax cheating. Uh, we're never going to see his tax returns, unlike Hillary Clinton's, which we have all the way back to the late 70s. And by the way, I was the person who got the Clintons, after they read my expose of their returns, to change how they did their tax returns. They were paying the federal government more than twice as much as they needed, and shortchanging charity by the same amount, and they adopted my implicit advice about that. But we're never going to see Donald Trump's tax returns, even if he's elected. If Hillary Clinton's people were listening to my program, what advice would you give them about tonight's debate if they would listen? Well, I, that I'm not in the business of doing, Valder. I, I don't work, you know, if, if Hillary Clinton's or Trump's campaign called me up and asked me for advice, I would tell them to go pound sand. When politicians call and ask me to explain arcane issues about tax and regulatory law, I do that, but I just give them facts about it. But I can tell you what you're going to see tonight. You're going to see kabuki theater. You're not going to see important political issues about how do we have the liberties of the people endure, how do we continue to be a beacon to the rest of the world. Donald Trump's problem is going to be can you demonstrate substance uh, and can you get Hillary Clinton to appear to be so much of a policy wonk that she comes off as blah, 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 blah. Hillary Clinton's issue is going to be, can you get Trump to show people there's no substance there with him and that his temperament, for which he is famous for exploding and blowing up, uh, can he keep it under control for 90 minutes? But advice, I don't give politicians advice. I don't blame you. I don't give anybody advice, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. I don't. David K. Johnson, you are more fascinating than the book, The Making of Donald Trump. But where can they get a copy of your book? Uh, the book is for sale all around the world. Uh, there's even a German language edition in uh, Europe called uh, The Octi Trump, which means the Trump file. It was on the New York Times bestseller list, the Washington Post, LA Times, USA Today bestseller list. And it's a very quick read. I mean, I wrote it so you could get through it in about less than five hours. I love that. I love a good read. David K. Johnston, you are fascinating, and the book itself is fascinating. Thank you for gracing the Valder BB Show. I hope my audience is listening. Valder, thank you for having me on. It's been my joy.